All right, folks. I think we're going to take some time today and we're going to practice drawing some Lewis structures. And I might even lead into a little bit um, concerning shape and maybe a little bit about bond angle, which is actually coming up in a later lecture. But let's go ahead and practice drawing some Lewis structures. This will help you on, oh, assignments 18 and assignment 19 and, and maybe even a couple of others. So I have a few here that we're going to do. Let's start with uh, SCL2, sulfur dichloride. So remember, um, to draw a Lewis structure, let's start by finding the number of valence electrons that we have to deal with here. And um, sulfur is in group 16, so it has six valence electrons. And each chlorine is in group 17, seven valence electrons apiece. So I have 14 plus 6, 20 valence to work with. Now let's start off by putting, uh, make, deciding on what's going to be our central atom. Let's put sulfur in the center. That seems to give us a little bit of symmetry because I put, can put a chlorine on opposite sides. And if we put a pair between the sulfur and the chlorine, we've used up four of our 20 valence electrons. That gives me 16 more. I'm going to put a pair above sulfur and a pair below sulfur. So now sulfur has its octet. Do you all see that? What about the chlorines? Well, this one on the right needs three more pairs. So that's easily done. And this on the left needs an additional three pairs. So let's see how many valence electrons I've used up of my 20. Hopefully I've used exactly 20 and I can move on. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. That's perfect. That's a great Lewis structure for SCL2. Now, oftentimes you'll see it written like this, where we take those two dots and we make it a solid line connected to each chlorine. Now, don't forget the non-bonding pairs. And we could either use dots or we can use lines to represent those if you'd like. So sometimes you'll see this. Remember, each line represents two electrons. So either this version or this version is just fine with me. Okay, those are the proper Lewis structures. Now, if I were to build this, if you take a look um, at this model here, you're going to see that electron pairs have this type of uh, balloon type of shape protruding out of the central atom. And you can see sulfur has one, two, three, four of those. And they tend to be as far away from each other as possible. So instead of being on one plane, you know, four flat in a plane being 90 degrees from each other, they tend to form what we call a tetrahedral shape. So we have this type of arrangement for the electron pairs around the central atom. Four pairs as far away from each other. Remember, pairs of electrons are repellent to each other. So they don't want to be really close to it. We don't want to put them on the same plane. They want to arrange themselves that they're as far away from each other as possible. Now, two of those are bonding pairs. So I'm going to put a bond up here. We'll call that a chlorine. And I'll bond another one. Oh, it doesn't really make a difference where. Let's bond it right there. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see just more than just my big old fingers. And you can see that that molecule is not linear as it's represented in the, uh, in the Lewis structure. You can see that the chlorines are not right across from one another. They're bent, aren't they? So we call this shape, conveniently, bent. If it were linear, folks, it would look like this those four pairs. And that just doesn't make sense. Can you imagine those four pairs of electrons arranging themselves like that? No, it's not going to happen. They're going to be as far away from each other as possible, so we end up with that shape. Okay, once again, that's getting into a lecture you guys will hear in class, and I'll make a video for it very soon. So I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Right now, you just need to really concentrate on how to draw the Lewis structures. Let's try PI3. Phosphorus is in group 15, it has 5 valence, and each iodine is in group 7, it has 7 valence. So we have 26 valence electrons to work with here. Of course, we'll put phosphorus in the center, and we'll make it symmetrical. We'll put an I on one side, we'll stick an I on the bottom, and we'll put an I on the left. See, I'm using lines here to represent pairs of electrons, so that's 2, 4, 6 of my 26. Let's put a pair above phosphorus to give phosphorus its complete octet. And we'll put three pair around each iodine. Three more pair, I should say, around each iodine. And we end up with this Lewis structure. Let's count the dots to see if, we, if we've used 26. 2, 4, 6, 8, 
10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26. Yeah, that works. That's my Lewis structure for PI3. Now let's take a look at what shape this would be. There are still four pairs around that phosphorus atom, aren't there? So I'm focusing just on the middle atom here, on the central atom, phosphorus. There it is. And there's one, two, three, four pairs around it, just like we see in the Lewis uh, structure. Okay, they're going to be this far away from each other. The pairs are going to form a tetrahedron. And this time we have three bonds. One, two, and let's put the third one up here just for fun. There we go. So we end up with that shape. Once again, it's not flat. It doesn't form a T at all. We call this a trigonal pyramid. Do you see that? A nice trigonal pyramid. It's a three-sided pyramid there. Trigonal pyramid. Okay. All right, let's take a look at Cl2O. All right, chlorine. Uh, there's two chlorines, group 17, so seven valence apiece, and oxygen's in group 16, six valence. So 14 plus six, that's 20 valence to work with. Wow, deja vu. Don't you think that's going to be a lot like the one above? So we'll put oxygen in the middle, once again, to try to maintain some type of symmetry. Put the CLs on either side. Put a pair between oxygen and each chlorine. Look, I'm back to drawing dots again, aren't I? I'll put a pair above and below oxygen. We'll complete the octets for chlorine. This is sort of fun, isn't it? And let's count up our dots, see if we've used 20. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Boom! Perfect. So, if I take a look at the center atom oxygen, you can see there's four pairs around it again. That's no surprise, is it? So let's go ahead, we have four pairs. Remember they arrange themselves sort of like balloons stuck to that center atom and they're going to be as far away from each other as possible. We call that a tetrahedron. And two are bonding, so let's put one up here and one over here. And you can see we have that bent shape again, don't we? Just like the one above. These are isoelectronic to each other because we have the same geometry for the electrons. And of course, we have the same number of bonds, so isoelectronic. There we go. It's nice and bent. Okay, what about NH2Cl? Okay, nitrogen has five valence. It's in group 15. Each hydrogen has one valence. And chlorine has seven valence. So we have 14 valence altogether. What should we put in the middle? Hmm. Let me go with nitrogen. I think we can get some symmetry out of that. We'll put an H on one side, an H on the other side, and let's stick the chlorine down below. If you switch those two for right now, that's fine. I would be okay with that. It turns out that nitrogen is in the center of this particular molecule. Put a pair between nitrogen and hydrogens, and then nitrogen and chlorine. Put a pair above nitrogen. Okay, and then I'm going to put three more pair around chlorine, but I'm not going to touch the hydrogens. Remember, the hydrogens are an exception to the octet rule. They only need one pair or two electrons around them to have a noble gas configuration. Let's see how many, how many electrons I've used. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Ta-da! Once again, that's a good Lewis structure. Let's take a look at the center atom. You can see there are four pairs around the center atom. One, two, three, four. So there are my four pairs, and it looks as though three are bonding, uh, two of them are hydrogen, and one's a chlorine. So we're going to get these out here, put a hydrogen up here, we'll put a hydrogen, I don't know, let's put it back here, put a chlorine over there, boom. So we've seen this shape before, haven't we? Yeah, that's a trigonal pyramid, isn't it? It's the same as we saw up above, except where these were all the same atoms, here we have one that's different. So we call that a trigonal pyramid. Okay? Hey, we have some time. Let's do a few more. We've only gone, oh, about nine or ten minutes. So let me throw a couple more at you. Let's do an ion. Let's do NH4+. Plus. Okay, so we have an ion here. Okay, nitrogen has five valence. Each hydrogen has one valence. What do I do with that positive sign? Well, it means it's a positive ion. It's lost an electron to do that. So I'm going to take one away from the total because of that positive ion. So I have eight valence to work with. We'll put nitrogen in the middle. 
Then we'll put a hydrogen on each of the four sides. That makes sense. That's nice and pretty and symmetrical, isn't it? I've used two, four, six, eight, and I've got it. Now, for an ion, we put that in brackets so the reader understands that it's not neutral, that we've had to either add or take away electrons. In this case, it's a positive one charge. We took away an electron, so we put the charge on the outside. So that's the good Lewis structure for the ammonium ion, NH4+. Let's take a look at that shape real quick. You can see that we have four pairs around the nitrogen, and it looks like those four are all bonded to hydrogens, aren't they? So let's see what we're going to end up with here. Put one on top, one over here, one over here, and one back here. And that would be the model to represent the ammonium ion. You can see it's a tetrahedral shape, isn't it? All four pair are bonding. Okay? All right, let's take a look at this next one. Let's do ClO4 negative. Okay? ClO4 negative, the perchlorate ion. So chlorine has seven valence. Each oxygen has six valence. We have a negative one charge. That means we've gained an electron, so I'm going to add one more valence to the total. So I have 7 plus 24. Let's see, it's 31, and one more. That gives me 32 valence. Okay, put the chlorine in the middle. Let's put an oxygen on each of the four sides. And we'll go ahead and bond the chlorine to each oxygen, and we'll complete oxygen's octets by adding three more pair to each oxygen. There we go. So I've used two, four, six, eight. Eight around each oxygen, and there's four oxygens. That's 32. What am I forgetting? That's right, it's an ion, so I put brackets around it so the reader knows that it's not neutral. I've had to either add or take away electrons. In this case, I added one, which gives it a negative one overall charge. Can you figure out that shape? It's going to look a lot like that, isn't it? Just like the ammonium ion did. We call that tetrahedral. Okay. Let's see if we can squeeze another one or two in here. Let's go with C2H6. C2H6. You know what? I want to change that. Let's change it to C2H4. Okay? Let's do that one instead. So, we have two carbons. Each has six valence. Four hydrogens. Each one has one valence. So we have 12 plus 4, let's see, I think that's 16, isn't it? Now, we can't go C to H to C to H, except that's silly. Hydrogens can only make one bond, so don't, don't be doing that. Hydrogens can only have one pair around it at all, or period. So I'll put the C's next to the C's. Put a pair between them, and then let's see, I'll put an H up here and down here, and H up here and down here. That looks sort of symmetrical, doesn't it? A pair here, a pair here, a pair there, a pair there. Let's see, this carbon here needs another pair to have eight around it. And this carbon needs another pair. Hmm, maybe that'll work. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Hmm. Two, four, six, eight. There's eight around that carbon. Two, four, six, there's eight around that carbon. Two, four, six, eight, um, ten, twelve, fourteen. I don't think that's working for me. That's not enough. I, I have, uh, let's see, each carbon has, uh, oh, that's where I made my mistake. There we go. Each carbon, carbon in group 14, each carbon has four valence. Aha. Uh -huh. So I don't have 16 valence. I have 8 plus 4. I only have 12 to work with. So if I redrew that, this is what we had. Let's see, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Oh, that doesn't work anyway, does it? So remember, if, that, if, if we end up not having enough, we try a double bond. So I'll put a two pair bond between each carbon. And then we'll bond to a hydrogen above, hydrogen below, on each of the carbons. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. There we go. That's my monster. That is C2H2. We have a double bond right there. Okay? Alrighty. By the way, I made that mistake on purpose just to make sure you guys were following along. Did you like that? 
See? You thought you got me there, but of course you know I did that on purpose. All right, let's do one more. Uh, we're going to go a little over time, but you guys can shut this off whenever you like, right? You don't have to watch the whole 17 or 18 minutes. CH3 and H2. Let's see, we got a carbon, four valence. We got a total of five hydrogens, one valence apiece. And we've got our nitrogen, group 15, five valence. So we have five plus five is 10. Okay, we got 14 valence to work with here. So let's do something like this. Let's bond the carbon to the nitrogen, right? Because car we can't have hydrogens on both. Uh, we can't have carbon, hydrogen, and then nitrogen. Because remember, hydrogen can only have one pair. And then on this carbon, we're going to put three hydrogens, right? Because it says CH3. So we'll do something like that. CH3, right? And this says NH2. So I'll put H2. All right? So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. I can put two more dots on it. Where do you think I should put it? You are correct. There we go. You guys are getting pretty good at these, aren't you? They're not too hard. Now we'll do lots more of these in class. We're going to be building models. We're going to be predicting shape. Remember we talked about shape. We'll be doing bond angles here. And we'll be doing something called polarity coming up. So stay tuned. This is sort of fun stuff. I think you guys will enjoy it. Take care. Bye-bye.